Hey everybody, Kazmo here with my buddy Terminus, and we are on the search and rescue server. This is a public open beta server where you can do some hoist extractions, you can land to pick guys up, you can do some firefighting. It's a, it's a lot of fun, and I definitely encourage you guys to get on there and hone your helicopter skills. My apologies, the audio is a little bad. I had my gain a little there. high. I was kind of messing right. around with my uh, microphone earlier and uh, forgot to reset it, so I apologize, but I've tried to cut out a lot of that. And I hope you guys can enjoy at least what the server provides. And yeah, check it out. Just search search and you should find the search and rescue server and have a good time. Enjoy the video. I'm I'm behind the behind the power curve today. <laughs> All right. Oh, I know the feeling. One thing I did discover to my chagrin mm -hmm. is the uh Cold start. Uh, cold start. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I knew that was coming. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. I know how to cheat it. Um, all right. I'm not good at the MI8, but I'm going to jump in it because you're going to you're going to make me better. That's fine. I'm good with that. I can walk you through a cold start if you want to do it by hand. It's not the hardest thing in the world. I don't have the. I don't think I have the mental capacity right now. What 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 other right. tricks with the MI8? Because I'm not smart on it. So um, the default setup for the Mi8 is heavy. And you're going to notice this one is super stripped down. You're at 30% fuel. You've got no doors on the back. You've got no pylons, no IR suppressors, uh, no extra armor. So you're going to feel a whole lot lighter and more nimble than if you've flown it before. Right. But you do have a couple of things that you're going to want to check. And one of them is way over on the right side above the navigator's head, the dust protection. It's two switches with lights above them. Turn those off. Oh, I see. Okay, so I see the pedo heater. Yep. And it's just to the left of the pedo heat is engine dust protection. Left uh, and right. So, okay. Turn those yeah. up. Turn them down. If you're not landing in the dirt, just leave them down. Oh, okay. Well, they're already down. All right. All right. And then um, go back to the left pilot seat. So hit one. Yep. And then look straight up, and you see, should see the anti-icing system. Make sure that's off as well. Uh, yep. Oh. Okay. Anti-icing will reduce your max takeoff weight by like 2,200 pounds. All right. Yep. It's kind of nuts. Yeah, because it's sucking away air from the engine. So. Yeah. Uh, question, are you more comfortable with pounds or kilograms if I start talking weight? Uh, pounds. <laughs> okay. Figured as much, just wanted to make sure. All right, so we're on the search and rescue server. Obviously, we're doing search and rescue, so threat is not a, is not a thing. No, nope, not here. What do we do here? So here, if you uh, pick up into a hover and then look over the trees kind of straight ahead, you should see some great big piles of white smoke off in the distance. That's the server burning down. Oh, and our no. job is to go pick up water and put it out. All right. Well, I will attempt to follow you. All right. So I'll let you go first. So there's a ton of water all around behind us. You can pick up water from there. You can also pick up water from lakes and rivers or basically anywhere in the map you can find water and think that you can comfortably hover over it for a minute. Okay. Okay. So I, I'm just backing up. Boy, that collective is touching. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, you're at 30% fuel with no weight, so yeah, you're going to be picking up at like three and a half degrees collective here. Yeah, yeah, it didn't take much. All right, so we got a Huey over here hanging out with us. Yeah, that's our threat right there. Yeah. <laughs> He's within, what is it, 6.9 rotor discs. Yeah. <laughs> Mover measurements. Oh, so it automatically Seven. starts to pick up water. Yeah, as soon as you stop moving, uh -huh. it'll just start filling it. Okay, and what am I looking at to give me an indication of this? It'll come up as oh, a message I see. at the top Yeah, right. loading mm -hmm. water. Okay. Yeah, so All as right. it fills, you're going to need more collective and more right pedal. Yeah. Yeah, I saw they even had gazelles. Yeah. You can carry 50 pounds of water. Right. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Red solo cup of water. Yeah. All right. And you get the Huey on your left. Don't see him currently. Yeah, he's at your seven o'clock. All right. It's like eight rotor discs. Now, is there any trick to the the dropping of smoke? Like, what are we trying to accomplish here? So I'm gonna just do a little flyover and have a look at the fire first. But okay. the idea is to try to hit the outsides of it and soak that area with water to stop the spread. And then when you come back, you start working your way in from the outsides. Okay. You can just dump water right on top of the fire, but I think the idea is generally to come in from the outside of the fire, start dropping water just before you get to the edge of it, sure. and then try to get as far in as you can. Okay. Now, does it 
it's expanding and growing based on the winds or yep okay yeah exactly yeah it expands in a cone based on the wind direction okay it's actually kind of a cool system yeah it's wild so there's a stream off to our left we could fill up there technically yep wow. yeah if you can hover over it for long enough okay and if I remember correctly, there's a stream. Yeah, there is too. There's a stream right down here by the fire as well. Hmm. So we don't actually have to go very far at all. All right, so I'm going to turn around past this end of the fire and then try to drop water coming in towards the center of it. All right. You can comfortably cruise at 200 kph, no issues at all. Even 250 is going to be fine. All right. According to the server, it doesn't matter how much water is dropped yet. They're just measuring that some water has been dropped on the area. Hmm. So I guess the faster you go, the more area you can cover. I don't know if there's any advantage to higher altitude here or if just flying right over the top like this is the same. Uh. Do that, and then just before I get to the water, I'm going to try F1, start dropping. All right, I'll start dropping as I cross the stream, I guess. Let's see what happens. All right, dropping. Sadly, one of the limitations of what you can do as a third-party developer for this. Yeah. All right, good drop on fire. That's good. Well then, I guess we should try picking up water from the stream, hey? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I got you in sight. In this configuration, you can auto down so easily. Roll the power back on when you get close. See, I'm used to flying this thing heavy, and I'm used to crashing, so... Yeah. <laughs> I'm nervous. That's one of the things I was going to try to show you tonight, was some of the different configurations and how much of a difference it makes. Yeah. By default, you're loaded up full fuel and just everything on board, and it's a very, very different helicopter. Yeah. Alright, I got you there. I'm going to pass you. I'm going to head to this uh, straight section up here. Alright. Even with the water on board, it's still lighter than what you're used to. Yeah. Alright, I'm going to drop a little bit ahead again. Yep. And other. I'm not going very fast. I'm not going to cover a whole lot here. That's okay. There. One segment was extinguished. Oh, nice. <laughs> One segment. Only right. like a hundred to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it kind of makes me wonder, like, is this designed for a crew of ten helicopters or somebody yeah. to spend four hours? The only thing to watch for is that when you uh, drop the collective fully, your engines will spool down quite a bit to like 70% mm. RPM. Okay. And it will take some time to bring them back up. Okay. All right. I am fully loaded. Me as well. All right. Did you head further down the river again? Yeah, same spot. I'm coming up and out. Okay. Now. I got you, Visual. I don't see you. I must be looking the wrong way. Yeah, I'm much further down the river from you. Looks oh. like you're 7, 8 o'clock. Oh, yeah, there you are. Okay, I'm, I'm short final for the fire here, so... Okay. I wanted to get some speed this time. Okay, yep. There we go. Now I've got 100. Go for 250. And dropping. So I started flying DCS in 2014. Hmm. Somebody recommended it as a. I was mentioning to someone, I forget who, probably on Reddit, 
that I wanted to fly helicopters because I just got a joystick to play fl uh, space sims. Mm -hmm. And they said, oh yeah, DCS is like the gold standard. You want to go and fly the Huey? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I gave that a try, and then I gave the hip a try, and then I had no interest in flying the Huey anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you're pretty much a, a hip only guy, it seems like. For the most part. So I can, like, I can give you specs and everything for landing this, target altitudes and speeds and all that, but basically it's just put the thing on the thing. Put the fan yeah. on where you want to land and yeah. ride it down at 100 kph or whatever. Okay. Alright, I'll land on your right. Okay. Yeah, the nose is much, I guess, lower than I feel like it should be, so um, my sight picture's all screwed up. But. Oh, yeah. And you're so far forward. If yeah. you're trying to do precision landings and land on a pad, I'm always coming up short. Yeah. You hover over cargo and you can't see it anymore. It's just... Oh, so we don't even have back doors on. Okay. Nope. We're totally doing... stripped of everything. Wow. It's one of the things this module has that most others don't, is in the mission editor you can take off the armor and the IR suppressors and yeah. a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I knew you could take the pylons and stuff off, but I didn't know about the rest of stuff. That's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. All right, so what else can we do on the server? So the other thing on the server is just basically search and rescue without the combat aspect from yours. So it'll okay. be, here's some people that need rescuing, here's a bearing to them in a distance, go pick them up, bring them back to any of the hospital points around the map. Mm -hmm. And depending on where you go, if you go back to spectators and look at the F10 map, or just do it anytime really, uh, you'll see there's a couple of different regions. Some of them are more challenging than others. Okay. Oh, we're going to change places? Okay. Yeah, you'll have to change your slot. Alright, I'm 100%. I'm ready to go. Yeah, me too. Alright, I'll let all you right. lead. So for this part, uh, it's also in your F10 menu in the radio. Yep. And you should have an option for list closest SAR missions. Yep. And then you just pick one that seems okay. interesting. Alright, so we got the closest one is bearing 302 for 10 kilometers. So do, yep. they, do they call you and I guess they don't call you and pop smoke like uh, the Seesaw? They do. Oh, they do? Okay. Yep, they'll just automatically pop smoke when you get close, so you don't have to request I see. it. I see. Okay. But yeah, you just throw that in. I just dial it in on my course select. Usually I don't bother doing the Doppler for these. They're not that far. How do you dial? So you've got a little knob just oh, at the I bottom. Oh, There it is. Yeah, and you can just rotate it to 302. All right. 302. Okay. I'm ready. All right. Turn my fan on. You mean your generator indicator? You yeah, might. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so the last time I tried doing these kind of missions on the SAR server, it was a snowstorm. Oh, and wow. a crazy wind. That's awesome. Yeah, it rotates every six hours. Server will restart with thunderstorm, snowstorm, or a nice calm day, or super windy day. Mm -hmm. Did a video flying in the rain. It was kind of like a nice way to just kill an hour in an afternoon and then if nobody else was home just yeah. fly around in the rain pick people up yeah that's that's a good point it is kind of relaxing because you can just go fly and don't have to worry about an SA-10 going through the window or something yeah exactly there's that whole civil side to the DCS that yeah. you get to appreciate a little more in the helicopters yeah yeah because sometimes I just want to fly mm -hmm. you know sometimes I'll get in and do like an ILS approach in the F-16 or something just do something. Absolutely. So, is there hoist capability, or do you have to land? You don't have to land. You can just hover over top of them, and it'll give you oh, okay. guides to do that. You can also adjust the length of your rope. It's a, you know, a magic invisible rope. Sure. But you can adjust the length of it from the F10 menu, and there is uh, F5 adjust rope length. Hmm. And all that'll really do is change the hover height to be at to pick them up. Alright. Well, let me uh, slip in here. Yeah, I'm circling around. I'm just kind of pointing myself into the wind. Okay. One thing I do like about the server is that the directions it gives you are not only a magnetic bearing, but it'll also give you the directions on the face of the clock. Mm-hmm, yeah. Magic numbers for vortex ring state. Negative three or four meters per second. Technically four. But if you hit three, you're probably going to hit four.
So one of the things they say about people who learn to fly and then go into lessons later on is they're overly dependent on instruments and I definitely understand that because mm -hmm. I don't get the feedback from the helicopter. I have to rely on my instruments more than I could with yeah. if I were in the real thing. So they always say that that translates into when you start taking lessons, you just stare at those instruments. Yeah. All right. Are you getting directions in? Uh, a bunch of stuff popped up, but one o'clock for 50 meters. How close do you have to be? Fairly close. Okay. Within okay. a few meters. I'm at 20 meters now. Okay. Seven meters. Ten seconds to pick up. Ah, I went too far. Oh yeah, you gotta be spot on. Yep. And this isn't a bad spot. You're right at the top of the hill. Aside from not having a good reference point for a hover. Yeah. Sometimes they're right up the side of the mountain, and you're hovering with the tailwind, trying to keep steady. Wandering in and out of ground effect. Uh, it says I'm hovering too high. Ugh, current altitude 64 meters, rope length is 20. Oh, oh. Let's see. How do I. F10 oh, and then F5. F5. Yeah. Alright, so. I guess you'd want the long one. Yep, I want the long one. It's hard to do while you're still hovering. Uh, yeah. If only I had a crew. <laughs> if only I had somebody to do that. Oh, it just changed. I mean, it went from 7 o'clock to 2 o'clock, 30 meters. That, that wasn't fair. Oh, that's a different guy. Yeah, you just got to oh, come back. Oh, there's two guys? There. There's three of them here. Oh, well, I'm going to go with this one here. 2 o'clock, 30 meters, stand by. Yeah, I'm just in range of it to tell me where one is right now. Shit. <laughs> Man. I feel like I'm hovering pretty good here, but... Yeah? Oh, it's a nice hover. Drifting forward a little. I'm trying to go back. It says I'm 30 meters, 6 o'clock. I don't know how that happened. I... You've got a gauge that's the top right corner of your dash. That one, you'll see little white lines coming out of the center of it. Mm. That's telling you which way you're moving. Alright, I'm still too high, he says. I must have popped up here. Alright, right off the nose. Yeah, this is no joke. <laughs> I mean, this is good practice. Like, if you're, uh, you're trying to get good at your helicopter stuff, this is the right place to do it. Yeah. I also kind of put you on hard mode in a helicopter you never fly, but That's by the looks cool. of that hover, you can handle it. Yeah, it's just fine tuning. I feel like Getting this dude on the ground is just uh, moving around on me. <laughs> He's just wandering around yeah, trying to make it difficult. Yeah. Yeah, how the hell? How does he go from 7 o'clock to 4 o'clock and not change the distance? Different guy, same distance. I, well, shit. It's got to stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll never get this dude. Alright, goddamn you. Get on the road, Bill. 10 meters, man. Come on. Oh my gosh. This is stressful. I'm gonna turn my nose around. Why are there so many guys here? It's just nuts. See if I can pick one up. Alright, yeah, you do your thing. That's tough. There we go. Hovering. Ten seconds, that's a long time. Yeah. Too far. Yeah, without a without something in front of me to look at, pretty hard to stay in the same spot. I don't remember it being ten seconds. It's a long time. Oh, I'm too high. <laughs> too far. Too high. Yeah. 
joke. Maybe I'll uh, go with that longer rope even. Uh, very long F4. Let's try that. No, I don't have to be danger close to that tree. Check your four o'clock, 20 meters. Are you still right behind me? I'm off to your right. You're, okay. You're good. I'm supposed to back up a little here. Yeah, you got space. Oop, a little low. Yeah, now imagine this, but snowstorm. <laughs> yeah. Just wish I could see him down there. Mm -hmm. Aha, I got him. Nice. That just leaves two. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna scoot on out of your way because I feel like probably right yeah there. I'm gonna yep. back into you. You're good. You're good. I'm below you and uh, you're one o'clock. So what I did for me was I got pretty low, and once I sort of zeroed in on where I think he is, I, I found a tree that was close to him, and okay. I just and I just hovered to that tree and used that as my reference. That's smart. All right, Keep so drifting. I'm back down low below you. Plenty of space. Got him. Come All right. On. Two seconds. I see you. One second. Jackpot. All right. Yeah, that's the Beautiful. trick. Just narrow down what tree they're hiding up. All right. I'll follow you. Looks like uh, home is straight down there. Gotcha. Off your one o'clock-ish. Yeah, that's really uh, good actually, practice. Yeah. And then if you go into the F10, you go list closest bases, it'll give you all the hospitals and uh, clinics that you can fly to. Oh, okay. All right, I guess that's our LZ there. No, not where no. we took off from. It's okay. actually back into town a little bit. Oh, okay, so it's actually like the hospital or something. Yeah, one of my complaints about this is that the hospitals are not easy to find sometimes. <laughs> They're not well marked. Right, yeah. You will see a FARP object, but... There's no obvious marking. Everything is just the same repeated buildings that you're used to. Yeah. It's around here somewhere. Uh, wind. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're not giving you any guidance. Uh, closest base for me is 341 for 0 0.6 by 6 o'clock. I just flew over it. Yeah. Turning around. Coming left. All right. Oh, that'll be it right down here, I guess. Yeah, it says I have left. You left? Like like I overflew it. Like I oh, already okay. passed it, so. They're telling me to have a good flight. <laughs> I've landed at it once before, and I've already forgotten where exactly it is. Hidden. I think it's down there with those trucks. Maybe. Let's see. F10, 3. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Clock. Yeah, this is be this hospital oh building God. down I'm, here. I'm going down. Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> no. I'm no. Sorry, people in the back. <laughs> so this thing keeps stats. So next time you log on, you'll see how many times you've uh, crashed or we'll pick people up. How many oh, people? Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's cool. And then it just spams you with, hey, you picked up everybody. Yeah, nice. What a relief. Yay. 